Let's start off with a high-level overview of the two major things that have happened this week, and then we will get deep into our analysis. Tevis, you can start us off. Sure. Um, I'm actually going to kick it to Riley. Just in case, so the crypto thing and the, the student loans is probably the two biggest topics that we're going to jump into. But before we get into that, was there anything else this week, I guess this week so far, that uh, warrants a conversation or no? Uh, I, yeah, I want to bring up something that we're not going to talk too long about, but the SoFi app had like a, a really big update. Uh, it forced everybody that was using the SoFi app on iOS uh, to update, which is odd because usually you have to, uh, sometimes you could still use your banking app, but there's a new update and you could just update it at night. But um, from what Tevis has told me and from what I know from people that I talk to on a regular basis that knows more about this stuff is that it is a lot of back-end uh, changes to the app, and it feels faster. So finally, like the SoFi app actually feels a little bit more usable. We're going in the right direction. Yeah, so if these are the signs, right, for you to pick it up, if it force pushes you out of the app and then you have to re-log in again, number one, and then if you have to force update the app, uh, they do a force push, those are indications that there's a really big change a back, from a back-end perspective. And that doesn't necessarily mean that your user experience is going to be different or the app is going to look different. Those are like more minor things that you can do with like voluntary app updates. But if it's a forced push, then it's generally something to do with like their database or how they're handling all like the user authentication and stuff. So um, if it's getting faster as a result of that change, I wouldn't be surprised at all because all the signs point to some back-end change. And uh, yeah, I mean, their whole goal is to get on a single core. So getting off of these third party providers for all these little niche uh, products. And then once we're on our own core, uh, our, our margins are going to get better and, and our unit economics should get better. I mean, not, not necessarily this is this app is doing anything in particular, but like that's exciting to see we're going in that direction. Absolutely. OK, so is, is that is that it? Can we jump into the crypto stuff? Yeah, let's, let's get right into it. So um, just to clarify on that, I am going to be playing mostly, you know, the steel man <laughs> case, the, the devil's advocate in this situation. Um, I turned my red on, so I've got, you know, my devil horns going and uh, I'm ready to argue on the other side because people want to see the opposite side of things as well. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the crypto debate. I mean, why were the senators right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, bro. The, 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 what's they the guy weren't. named Josh Harrod or something? What's his name? Uh, Sherrod Brown. I googled Sherrod Brown, and this was the whitest guy I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Thank you. I did, that did not look like a Sherrod Brown. Anyway, I was just like, whatever. "This is a Sherrod Brown." What's going on? <laughs> so, okay. So basically, here's what happened. What happened was uh, these Senate members. They were members of the U.S. Senate Bank Committee. On Monday, they wrote an open letter to Anthony Noto. They basically, in that letter, highlighted a couple of areas of concern that they had around SoFi's specific crypto activity. And so in that letter, they basically highlighted some of the conditions of the bank charter, uh, which SoFi gained in January of 2022. Apparently, as a result of gaining that bank charter, they were under way more scrutiny and they had to divest out of their digital asset business. Tanner, you can keep me honest on, on some of these facts. And that SoFi had two years to basically divest out of their crypto business. However, the concern comes from this committee or from these four senators that instead of divesting and ramping down that business, SoFi actually increased or accelerated that business because I think in February or March, they offered something like a new offering, uh, you know, for crypto. And so yeah. it caused concern under the regulatory requirements of the bank charter. And then in addition to that, the senator, the senators also highlighted in their uh, letter uh, some risk requirements, basically asking SoFi, okay, how do you determine risks? And are you actually doing any financing with crypto? So basically after FTX blew up, everybody's on high alert with regards to people having exposed risk. And out of all of the firms in the world, SoFi is the one that's getting the scrutiny. But SoFi is actually the one that, sorry, I'm like going into the case now. SoFi is actually the one that they responded right away to, to this letter. On Monday, they released a thread on Twitter. They also released an 8K that expanded on this point. And they basically, their stance was this. 
We've been perfectly in compliance with all regulation. We do not have any financing activity. So we do we don't do any like leveraging we don't like do any rehypothecation or any you know reinvesting with your money all we do is we buy we sell and we collect that brokerage fee the actual revenue from crypto is less than one percent of total revenue it's like 3.85 million was your total brokerage fees of that crypto is a portion so less than one percent and we're perfectly open to have that conversation they actually were welcoming it they're like hey if you want any other details like let us know and so I basically made a video on this this week and, and, you know, the whole stance was this is bad publicity because people always jump to the like nuclear option of like, is SoFi going to lose their bank charter? Because that's like the, the, the like the big clickbaity thing. But in my opinion, and I guess we're going to argue it here, but in my opinion, I think it's absolutely a nothing burger because it's going to result in some type of conversation with this committee and it might result in SoFi having to shut down you know, that crypto business at the very worst case. But I think that it's something that can be resolved with tweaking some of the regulations so that the lawmakers can say, hey, we actually had an impact. And then so if I can just carry on their business. But yeah, I guess we can open the floor. I, I would say that the, the remember, this is bear case Tanner, not, uh, not regular Tanner. But I would say that the absolute worst case is that our conditional bank charter gets revoked. Um, no way. Of course, it, it, it's a conditional bank charter. It, we, we haven't even really been set with a real bank charter. We're allowed to operate under a bank for now, given the fact that we uh, hold up to these conditions of, you know, divesting from SoFi digital assets. Okay, so let me just... Wait, what would, what would, wait real quick. What would be the logic for, for why it's not a bank? I so, mean, for yeah, why so, so basically, it taken away? Uh, admit, they were like, hey, we're going to give you this bank charter. But in order for us to do that, you're under a lot more scrutiny because like you're in charge of like lending and, and handling people's money. And as a result of that, you can't deal in crypto. You have to ramp down the crypto business. This so, was explicitly said you can't be in crypto. You have you two years. You have two years to divest out of crypto. And it's been like nine months since they got their bank charter. So Tanner, okay, so let's say in theory, the worst case is they lose their conditional bank charter. However, realistically, it'll never get there because first of all, it took them like almost two years to get it. So a lot of scrutiny had to go into that process. Right. And second of all, worst comes to worst, there's going to be some ultimatum where this committee is saying, hey, either divest in crypto or we're going to remove your bank charter. And guess what SoFi is going to do? They're just going to divest your crypto. It's it's Yeah, with with maybe some some penalties, some fees or, or fines along the way, right? Um, and so I want to make it clear too, there was three things. What so if, if I want to be very bearish about this, I would say that SoFi, I didn't like the response as much as most people did. I felt like they were skirting around the issue and not talking about the three issues that were, were talked about. There was only three. Okay. So the three issues were uh, SoFi is expanding its business in crypto when they should not be. We'll talk about that. Secondly, that they facilitate, um, you know, with customer trade or sorry, customer activities and allow people to to buy and sell with crypto, even though we might not have the capital requirements for that. And thirdly, is the fact that we let people buy dangerous tokens and securities, um, which is also not allowed. Uh, and so those three things, what 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 so far went into in their response was we don't have any, um, you know, direct exposure to FTX. That wasn't part of the letter. Uh, you know, we don't do extra lending transactions with crypto. We keep it very safe. That wasn't part of the letter. You know, um, I'm being very bearish here. I like watch my video. I that's mainly my actual response. But if if we're going to be candid, I mean, there is some good points in this letter, and uh, it's not a nothing burger if I were to say that. I think this is all absolutely nothing we had this crypto offering before we became a bank charter we had all of this the only thing that has changed was sofi said hey if you want to set up direct deposit with us and we can uh like allocate some of your direct deposit to crypto and we're not going to let you we're going to make sure you don't have to pay any fees on buying that crypto which is like pretty like a, a pretty good deal for a lot of people that are trying to buy crypto over the long period but nothing has changed and then but that also, changed. huh? But that changed. That that changed. But that I mean, like the argument of that. Okay, the whole reason this this whole thing came about wasn't because so SoFi did anything different. It's because of FTX. 
And then these these four senators, I don't know who they are and I don't like to get political, but it sounds like they're kind of opportunistic. They're they're using this kind of flow to like sure. gain favor with voters in their local area. So whenever this ever comes back onto a stage event or like if they have to, uh, I don't know, like debate about this subject in the future, they could say, hey, I voted to like stop SoFi from doing this shit. Well, so like well, what, what I would say is is opportunistic is the difference between opportunistic and wrong, you know, just, just because they were opportunistic and, and actually took, you know, a really, really good chance to go after SoFi, does that make their case wrong? So, you it, know, it, it makes it shady, but they could still have a case. And absolutely, Tanner, and I agree with you on that. And I think that a large portion of this is like, I wouldn't say virtue, well, I will say virtue signaling, actually, fuck it. Um, it is virtue signaling from a lot of these centers because they want to be seen as having a hard stance on this stuff because a lot of people lost money in that FTX blow up. And while I think that FTX is not, you know, they didn't explicitly say that, it really is a focus area, at least in the letter, because they start off the letter talking about FTX and how that blew up. And then question number one was, do you do any other financing activities with crypto? Is it just buy and sell brokerage fees? And so I guess that's why SoFi in their thread, first of all, addressed FTX and second of all, addressed how much money they actually, or how little money they actually made from uh, fees. And they said, it's only brokerage fees. We don't do anything else. Yeah, but it's, what, what I find is that, okay, sure. But the, the, the problem is, is I didn't find that they really addressed the expansion part, which I think was the big smoking gun. Um, and whether you want it, like, do you guys think it's an expansion of crypto? Do you think it's a new service or offering? The, the direct deposit thing? Yes. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, you had the choice. Okay, like SoFi's crypto product is super vanilla compared to like the rest of the industry. But it doesn't we, matter. It, it doesn't yeah, matter. It's just you know, is like that the, part an expansion of what they already had since they've gotten a bank charter? I don't think so, because like you could buy and sell crypto uh, whenever you downloaded SoFi before the bank charter, and you could do the same now, but you have a different way of doing it, and that's automated. So, so is automating crypto purchases like that big of a regulatory issue? Maybe not. Know. But in SoFi's own wording, and this was addressed in the letter, mm -hmm. they said the, the company's public billing the service as the latest expansion of SoFi's mm -hmm. offering to make it simpler to get started with cryptocurrency investing. Mm -hmm. That's what simpler they called it. That's start. what SoFi called it. Remember, yeah, I, I, I really want to be clear. This is bearish Tanner. Okay. So I'm yeah. not trying to <laughs> so, do a gotcha. no, I, 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 have, I have a question. I, I have a question. So JP Morgan and Bank of America, they don't allow any type of crypto trading. No, I actually so, more news broke recently that JP Morgan just filed. Uh, uh, what, what is it? The JP Morgan wallet. D did anybody hear about that news this week? Yeah. The, but, but the problem is, is that they can have a wallet. So it's very different. There's there's exemptions that oh, are okay. to enterprise level institutions we're conditional. that ask for that exemption. Yeah. So okay. Well, there's a distinction there. Is that because there is an exemption made and that was a part of a negotiation, or is it because they're a permanent bank charter and we're a conditional bank charter? Um, because that is a distinction to make. Because if we're just conditional, um, then okay, that's fair. But if there's an exemption, then I think. If we just follow this rabbit hole of like the bearish case, mm -hmm. then it'll probably lead to some back and forth discussion and either it'll fork, either we divest from crypto altogether, in which case we still have two years to divest from crypto. Like nothing is like no drastic action is going to be taken to the downside of the bank charter in the next two years. We've only been mm -hmm. having the charter for nine months. So either that's the route, which is negative for SoFi, of course, because crypto is one of their offerings, or we have some type of arrangement with uh, the Senate committee to include that crypto offering as an exemption included in the bank charter. So uh, this is why I say it's a nothing burger. It's because both routes are seemingly insignificant when you go to the nuclear option of like they'll lose their chart. I, but, but we were already told that the problem is, is that we were already told to get out of crypto in two years or, or January 1st, 2024 is the exact date uh, with, with an exception of three plus extra years of extension if needed, um, you know, with, with regulatory approval. But the, the problem is, is that what if we broke our lease? You know, what if, what if we did something wrong, which wasn't part of the condition early, you know, it expanded our service. And, and that's sort of the part where it's like, 
okay, well, does that mean we're still on track for January of 2024? Or does that mean they put down a hammer and say, you know what? Uh, I don't know how big of a, a slap on the wrist it's going to be. I mean, the stock did not drop, you know, 50%, right? It was a very small move to the downside. So there's a, a little bit of worry because obviously no one likes to get attacked by regulators, but also, you know, for the most part, most people think this is a nothing burger. I, I think that, yeah, yeah. And then also, like, we're, we're hyper-focused on SoFi because, I mean, we do this weekly, but, like, the rest of the crypto world is burning to the ground right now. And we're just, like, we're just, we're, we're caught by proxy. Like, we're really, this isn't as scary as it is to some other uh, organizations But it, but it had right nothing now. to do with the latest crypto crash. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, would they have brought this up? optimistic about that, but that's not even what, they're not saying that the, um, you know, th this has anything to do with the recent mm -hmm. decline. They're saying, you know, you broke your lease. Yeah, sure. We waited eight months to bring this out and that is really shady, but that doesn't make them wrong. That's the problem. Yeah, how do you, how do you tell j Powell and say, uh, you know what? Sorry, Federal Reserve, but they, they waited too long and, you know, there's no statute of limitations for eight months while they're, while they're sitting on this case. Yeah, I mean, and they, they could have just brought it up in two years, like with a month to go on the runway and say, hey, by the way, sure. where are you? And like, even that would have made more sense. But now, you know, again, I, I, I think so you have to tackle it. Okay, what is the resolution, which I think we talked about of that forking, and they have plenty of time to get to that resolution. And then you have to talk about like, what is the actual thing that they did wrong, or what supposedly, which in my mind is BS, but what supposedly sparked this was the fact that they offered, um, you know, basically an automation service with regards to that direct deposit. So a couple mm -hmm. months after they said, okay, part of every direct deposit can go into digital assets with no fees. Like, in my and we can argue this all we want, but like in my opinion, that's not a new product. Like it's not like, oh, we introduced 30 more shit coins for you to invest in. It's just like, hey, you're already doing it manually. Here's an automation. So yeah, I'm biased, I agree, but I don't know. So I, and I, and I, I have one I have one question. Was SoFi ever planning to get rid of crypto over the next two years in order to meet the condition they got when they got the bank charter two years ago? I don't think so. question, I think right? I think they were looking for expansion or um extensions and to work with them to a point where they could get that um you know and so if the ftx shit didn't crypto. happen you'd think these senators probably wouldn't have cared yeah because i mean they mentioned it in the letter like they don't they didn't say the word ftx but they they, they talked they did. about they, the they did. recent oh they did recent they named the or whatever yeah this is I, I don't know we're just we're just caught by proxy like um uh, like the whole argument about this direct deposit to the crypto side of like SoFi, that is just such a small like slap at the wrist of like what you could have been caught doing uh, in this in the past like month and, and negative headlines. Plus, but like there was, was SoFi... there, there were three conditions for SoFi's bank. Three, that was one of them. So it, it's it's not insignificant. I don't think it's mm. like this was one of the three rules to make our our bank charter actually hold up. And so that's why I'm not, like I said, I'm being very bearish. I want to keep mm. saying this because new viewers are coming in and they're like, why is Tanner flipped? I'm not yeah, flipping. But like, like SoFi had crypto the day that they had a charter and nobody cared. Right. But they like, expanded it. I don't know if that's called an expansion. You know, I think this is a, this is a, a loop because I, I, right. I guess I have to be a lawyer to actually. So, know and that. so was SoFi, and I guess this is a question for the group, but like, SoFi is the only bank charter I know that was handed out um, in January. But I know that right before uh, in 2021, I think uh, Lending Club and Square both received bank charters, either 2020, 2021. So where's their letter? So I, I've been I've been mm -hmm. hearing this on, um, well, Lending Club, I don't actually know if they deal in crypto. Uh, like, I, I, I don't know Lending Club very well, but also Block doesn't have a bank charter the way that SoFi has a bank charter. They have a, a loan approved bank charter. They can't do what we can do on the financial side. It's, it's, quite, it's quite different. We have a fully licensed bank charter. They have a partial, you know, depository insurance bank charter for, the, for their loans. It's very different. Got it. I think um, it comes down to one simple question. Sorry, I'm almost done. Yeah. Uh, did Anthony Noto and the leadership team Come, you should you should talk, highlight that uh that talk comment. to the Is regulators that... before they did the direct deposit thing because i feel like that would be a, a a huge misstep in like actual leadership because like all you have to do is ask 
and they could say yes or no. And if, if they said, I mean, like if they didn't ask and they did do it and then they got their tails between, I'm, I'm, I want to sell all my shares, but like, I, I don't know. I don't see a, a world where they, they spent two years trying to get this bank charter and then they're playing around pushing the border or pushing the envelope right. of what they can do. Right. And so that was definitely the best retort that SoFi said is that they've been in constant and concise, uh, mm. you know, conversations with regulators the whole time. That's by far the best thing that they could have said, because that means that, you know, no one was worried the whole time, <laughs> mm. uh, unless maybe they weren't in as concise of a conversation as what they're maybe giving out to be. But uh, another part of this is that SoFi is offering unregulated and dangerous tokens and securities. I'm back and forth on this one. Does anyone know about this? So we, we what offer, are we what are we offering besides the basic ones? Don't they only we have like 30, 30 coins? Yeah, yeah we, we offer, offer a lot coins. compared to a lot of places. Um, so the again, only reason this matters is because, again, Bank of America doesn't offer this. Robinhood does. Coinbase does. But because they're a bank and we offer it, that's why. Because the, the 30 coins are offered does. in a lot of places, right? It's and not it's like, where do you so draw the line at like what's risky and what's not? Like you could have somebody say, oh, you offer Bitcoin, like that's risky versus- Bitcoins, like, of course Bitcoin's well, risky. You know, so, that's insane, right? So first off, tokens, uh, whenever they get really big, obviously not, not these uh, crap coins or whatever, but as they get big, they are decided on what they are in terms of a regulatory standpoint, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, all these ones. What's the size um, threshold? Do you know? I don't. I don't. Um, what I will say is that the company's policy on cryptocurrencies, this is SoFi's company policy, that for in order for them to be listed, they have to align with SoFi's values, such as promoting financial inclusion and economic freedom. That's quote for like that. That's a quote in SoFi's uh, book. OK, wow. Really? And then I didn't know that. in the second part, in one of the tokens that is listed in SoFi's digital assets, they call it word for word, a crypto pump and dump. Uh, and has no special use cases or features. So this is one of the other parts that the senator brought up, uh, saying that you know SoFi is just being a little bit shady in the way that they're promoting these tokens because one, they're saying that it aligns with their values, and also secondly, it's a pump and dump. They state it as a pump and dump, and it's useless. I think to your point, it is kind of. I wonder how. Like I, I said this like a couple pods ago, like three or four weeks ago, I, it is almost guaranteed SoFi is going to be running into regulation. Uh, there's going to be a lot of ro rules and stuff. Like their app, like if you go through the home feed, they, they show all their products. Oh, look, like, here's a crypto offering. Here's get uh, $5 in SoFi points as soon as you start your crypto thing. I don't know if they'd actually do that, but they, they do all this cross-selling and they kind of advertise within the app. So in the in the long term, I... I I think that there could be a time where we, we get some regulatory like action towards us, um, just stuff that we do inside the app. Um, yeah, it is it's 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 totally normal and expected, guys. Like they give us a bank charter now that opens a door for them to scrutinize and just give us shit for everything with regards to the bank charter. It's within their wheelhouse. But here's the thing, though, and you know, because we've spent like almost half an hour just talking about this. Um, the thing is that I think that a lot of these regulatory bodies are very disjointed and have little communication. That's a bias on my part and check me on it. But if you talk about the, the senators or that committee, I guarantee you that so far, the reason why they put, hey, we've been talking to regulators all along is because they've guaranteed check this. If that's a huge part of their offering and their business, they're not going to make marketing materials or content to promote that crypto side of their business if they're just going to divest in two years. I mean, just thinking logically, it doesn't really make sense. So my bet would be that they've already gotten the green light from some regulatory body that hasn't had that communication or anyways, like in other words, it's going to get resolved in a conversation format. Maybe they just remove those coins that have no utility or whatever it is. Um, but ultimately, I still think that, again, nothing significantly material to the business will come of it. Right, right. And and I think that's a good point, right? Is that um, I, I think being a bank charter is even safer than before we had a bank charter because those rules are put in place to to have, you know, more regulatory bodies looking over us. And, and that should be a good thing, right? So it's probably less of a chance that we run into same, some sort of uh, issue or something along these lines. Um, are we good on this subject? I can, I can switch it back to green and, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't switch it back to green before we talk about student loma moratorium. I mean, come on, but, uh, 
yeah. Does anyone have any extra things that they want to talk about on um, this issue, the crypto issue? I think it's, yeah, there's no, nothing more to be said. Any comments, anything like this that people want to worry about? Should we worry though? I mean, that's like, that's what investing is all about. I mean, there's no, there's no clear, concise answers or else the stock would so double let, or let's, go to zero. Let's say they have to get rid of crypto to, to be a bit, because if you had gun to your head, right? Be a bank or offer crypto. Easy bank. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So we get rid of crypto. Oh, you can't trade your Bitcoin anymore. Like, is it the worst thing in the world? <laughs> yeah. If you can't, like, yeah. I mean, they're not even, they're what, 0.02% Tanner, I think you mentioned was their crypto activity. Like, it's extremely small. It's extremely small. <laughs> it's, I, I, guess, crazy. I guess uh, the last thing I kind of want to ask uh, Tanner or, or the group is like, they're going through Coinbase for this, right? So they're only collecting a brokerage fee. So aren't they necessarily like just the facilitator for that? Um, I mean, they're not offering, like they're not buying Bitcoin and offering it themselves, some, similar to like, you know, what Robinhood might be doing or what Coinbase might be doing. Isn't it the same as the insurance offering that we're having? Like we're referring someone to Lemonade, we're collecting a fee, like in principle, I mean. Yeah, in, in principle, it's the same, but the, not the way that the Federal Reserve looks at it.